How do you draw structural or constitutional isomers that contain oxygen? The answer in my world is to draw the constitutional isomers of the molecule without oxygen. In this particular example, C4H10O, it's C4H10. And then we're going to try to find all the places where we could insert an oxygen in between a carbon and a carbon or a carbon and a hydrogen. And all of the different places you can insert that O is probably going to lead you to a different constitutional isomer. Let's start with C4H10. What are the structural isomers for just that? Well, one of them is just all four carbons in a row. This is butane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens. Great. The only other option is to have a carbon chain of three with a methyl group sticking out of one. See how it's still four carbons all single bonded together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, hydrogens, right. Now, we were asked for C4H10O. We need to insert oxygens somewhere. Now, oxygen is fun because it likes having two bonds. You know, in H2O, you have one hydrogen on one side, one hydrogen on another, two lone pairs, but that's it. It likes having two bonds. So, Instead of like replacing hydrogens with O, what you're actually doing is you're inserting O in between two atoms that are already single bonded together. So I'm going to start out by inserting them between carbons and hydrogens. Maybe instead of a hydrogen on this first carbon, I have an O and then an H. That gives me C4H10O. Great. That's an alcohol. That's butan-1-all, if you want to name it. In fact, you know what? We do. If I stuck the O here or here, it's still butan-1-all. So those aren't structural isomers. But what if I inserted the oxygen between the carbon and the hydrogen here at the second position? One hydrogen, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I still have 10 hydrogens, I still have four carbons, and I've inserted the oxygen. Great. Butan-2-all is another option. If I put the O here on the third carbon, that's actually the same as doing it from the second carbon, but you've numbered your carbons from the other side, right? Like if I put it here, that's carbon-1, and that's carbon-2, and so I just have butan-2-all you know, flipped from what I have now. And same if I put the oxygen here on this carbon, that's carbon one all of a sudden, and then it's butan one all. So that's it for alcohols here. You can also insert car oxygen between two carbons. So I'm going to take the first single bond between this carbon and this carbon here. And I'm going to insert the O in between. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, C4H10O. There you go. Now, again, this is really going to emphasize that I'm actually just inserting the oxygen in different places, right? What is this called? Well, honestly, it's called 1-methoxypropane. And that's because I have a propane group here. And I have a methyl group connected via oxygen, that's methoxy, and it's connected to carbon number one of the propane chain. Great. Could I have put that between carbons number two and three? The answer is yes. This gives me what used to be called diethyl ether, because there's just an ethyl on either side of the O. But now I guess it's called uh, ethoxyethane because you have an ethyl group connected via oxygen, that's ethoxy, connected to this ethane here. Okay, that's it for places I could insert the O on butane. And just as an extra little note, if I had put the O in between this carbon and this carbon, then all of a sudden I have this molecule, but flipped as well. So I am actually done there. Now, where could I put the O here? Well, let's do the alcohols first. I could put the O here. 
if I put it on this carbon, I have basically the same molecule again. If I put it on this carbon, I basically have the same molecule again. The only other place I could put it that makes it a unique alcohol is on this second carbon, because then at least the OH is connected to the same carbon that the methyl group is. I am going to name these. Here I have 2-methyl propan 1-ol. It's a propanol with the alcohol group on carbon 1 and a methyl group on carbon 2. And this one is 2-methyl, see it's still on carbon 2, but then it's propan 2-ol because the alcohol group is also on carbon 2. Great. Now, where could I insert the O between carbons? Well, let's pick the first obvious place, which is between the first carbon here and the second one. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, that's great. Here, it's methoxy, and it's still attached to a propane, but that methoxy group is connected to carbon two of the propane chain. I knew that was going to feel a little similar to this, at least name-wise. If I put the oxygen between this one and this one, that's actually exactly the same thing. And if I put the oxygen between that and that, it's also exactly the same thing. Therefore, I think there are seven structural isomers for C4H10O, and I believe these are them. But the summary is... To draw the structural isomers of things that contain oxygen, I personally draw the isomers without oxygen first. And then I take the O and I try to jam it in between pairs of atoms. I do that over and over and over again to see if I get a different molecule. As long as they're connected differently, they're going to have a different IUPAC name and therefore uh, like if, if you're wondering if two molecules are the same thing, just name them both. And if the names are the same, then they're the same molecule, right? Done. One last thing. You were asked in this question for structural isomers, but if you know anything about chirality, some of these have R and S enantiomers. Here, there is a chiral center, so that one could be R and S. Um, I think this one has, no, this one doesn't. Oh, that might be it. Okay, only one of these has any enantiomers. But again, if, uh, if your teacher's saying that there are eight isomers, they're probably treating the R and S versions of butan-2-ol differently. All right, if you didn't get that, also don't worry. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.